today on BS Show Reviews and Discussion Podcast. I am your host, Norman Sanzo, and today we are going to review Pony Life Season 1, Episode 21, Game Night, and Director Spike's Mockumentary. In Game Night, Twilight Sparkle makes a new board game for her friends, but they f- but they find all of its rules boring. And in director Spike's mockumentary, Spike tries to make a documentary about Sugar Cube Corner, but the main six gets a little nervous on camera. So anywho, uh, let's uh, get into first impressions. So this this episode overall, like um, uh, episode twenty one here, really speaks to me. It feels all of my what you call this uh, check marks because I'm currently running or I'm currently playing a new game and I do love filmmaking and I do f- understand the struggle of um, kind of directing and kind of making a movie it's very very complicated <clears throat> but anywho uh, first impressions for game night so this episode is kind of interesting because it tries to tell the story of what happened when Twilight Sparkle creates a new board game for her friends and we all know that Twilight here is a stickler for rules and whatnot. Uh, I believe uh, later on the season in Friendship is Magic, she's gotten a little bit more, uh, what you call this, manageable or more lax on those rules. But it seems that in Pony Life, it's a bit different. But I, I do like how they try to play Dungeons and Dragons, <laughs> and it's Oh my goodness, speaking from personal experience, it is complicated as hell. Ah, boys. But anywho, let's hop right into it before I give my full thoughts. So, in Game Nights, sorry. uh, If you guys have not watched this episode yet, pause here and go do so. So, anywho, in Game Nights, our main, uh, the main six um, just got home from, well, having their outing at wherever they are and heading off to Twilight's house, which I should mention is very interesting because she lives in a tree. Like, Twilight lives in a kind of the Golden Oaks Library or something like that. Because... Um, it it feels like the treehouse of old. Uh, it has some of the patterns, but different locations and whatnot. And one of the few things that I notice for Pony Life is that Twilight's home is all over the place. One time is in the castle of the two sisters, probably, and then one time is in the tree, and the other is like. Yeah, like, her home is not really set in stone. But anywho, um, the ponies got back from wherever they are and are uh, just hanging out. Uh, They decide to, you know, just have a little fun and whatnot. And Twilight proposed that why don't they have a game night? But before that, somehow the weather from a really good sunny weather changed into a snowy, icy weather. And that is because Twilight kind of made a weather machine. Yay! <laughs> so she's trapping her friends indoors to play a game. Twilight suggests or propose that they have a game night and propose that they all play her new game um what was the game i, I forgot uh <clears throat> something to do with cantalot ah tales of cantalot so 
in Tales of Canterlot, it's it's basically a complex version of Dungeons and Dragons that it's more complex that in that it needs to be. Like there's rules upon rules upon rules upon rules. And um it's just what they're making is just too complicated or what Twilight's making is just too complicated. The girls <coughs> kind of read the rules, but it's just so tedious, so complex, so what was the word that they use? So um in depth that it's it's boring to say the least. So uh they decide to homebrew it and try to play it on their own without following Twilight's rules. Uh, Rarity, on the other hand, uh, read the rules and tried to trim it down. And I'm going to pause here because um, I might have gotten overboard a bit. So anyway, um, <clears throat> uh, I'm going to pause here. And uh, so here's the thing. Setup is pretty good. I do like the setup. I do like where things are going. And like I mentioned before, I am a f I played a game. Uh, I played Dungeons Dragons recently, and I'm currently running a camp. No, I'm running. I'm involved in a campaign. And the process of learning how to play the game was not hard, but it took a lot of uh self motivated studies to really understand the working mechanics of the game. And it's kind of fun. Uh, one of the few things that make D D fun is the role playing aspect of it. And by that I mean uh you act as your character. Talk to the uh and non-playable characters talk to the monsters and whatnot. I mean, that is the fun part. The rolling is just, or the die rolling is just the see if it managed to work or not and how successful it is. So for me, as an entertainer, it really speaks to me and it's really fun. Uh, but the set of rules like if this and that and all that stuff. Those are the things that kind of boggles it down to you trying to understand how things work. <clears throat> so Twilight here makes something similar, but her steps are if if this, then refer to that, read the whole passage that's most real tick, like real, there's so much work to do, and like, People, when you get them together and try to play something, it's just, they just want to play. They, they want to kind of quickly understand and how to just get in there and play. Uh, what Twilight does is like, okay, I want you to play my game, but I want you to fully understand the game so we can have a fun and on that aspect, she kind of fails. But that's besides the point. <clears throat> but anyway, um, knowing that her friends kind of want to do their own thing with the her, with her game, decides that uh, you guys are not respecting my uh, what what I did with the book or what, what I did with the game. Uh, no, I, I'm I'm moody. I'm I'm angry, so she gets mad at everyone and sends him away, and she's go and sulk on her own. While sulking, she hears laughter and whatnot, and she just check out her friends playing with her game. And Twilight just says, "I I thought you guys didn't want to play my game." And they say that, no, we want to play your game. It's just that it's a bit too complicated and we just want to have fun. And we, we kind of made it our own kind of deal. And yeah, would you like to join us for this? Because 
we are kind of going to save Cantalot Castle. Yay. And Twilight just joins in. And everybody's having fun. <coughs> if that episode ends. So, yay. Uh, that was Game Nights. And I have to say, it was a very interesting watch. Final thoughts after I review or after I talk about Director Spike's mockumentary. <clears throat> so, first impressions are in order for Director Spike's mockumentary. Uh, this one was kind of cool too. Like, I do understand the challenge of trying to make a movie, getting the scene right, getting the feel right, and just getting everything right. And especially when you're doing a kind of a documentary kind of deal, it's hard for some people to act natural in front of the camera. They so, Some people, when they are in front of the camera, they feel a bit... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, they, they feel a bit... Oh, man, I, I forgot the word. Um... Oh man, I forgot. Maybe maybe later on I'll remember it or whatnot. But they they, they feel nervous. They feel um I don't want to say threatened, but they they feel uncomfortable and they try to act unnaturally just to make themselves look good, which makes them look bad. Strange, I know. <clears throat> but anywho, uh, those are my initial thoughts. <clears throat> so let's move. on. On with the review. If you have not watched this, pause here and go do so. Welcome back. So we start off the episode with Spike. Uh, not, not really. It's, it's just the girls uh, having a food fight with cupcakes and whatnot. And there's a scene here which is really perfect. Where um, Rainbow Dash speeds herself up so fast that... It slows down time. Um, basically, what she did was a JoJo time stop, or maybe a, a flash, uh, the flash moving really, really fast. So what she did was okay. Everybody throwing cupcakes. She moved so fast that she redirected all the cupcakes to her friends instead, and that is pretty cool. I, I do like the idea of that and I wish most shows with high speed characters do that because it's it's one of those things where yeah th those characters or speedsters can do those kind of things like if they really focus they can manipulate their surroundings but that's besides the point because Spike barges in and says I'm back and Every pony asks, where have you been? And Spike just says, I've been away on my course for filmmaking. And I have an assignment. I want to make a movie starring you guys. And the girls are excited because they give in their ideas. Um, Spike wants... Sorry, uh, Rarity wants to have a romance uh, romance drama starring her uh, Rainbow Dash wants an action movie starring her um, Applejack wants a western uh, what else Fildeshai wants a animal documentary Pinkie Pie wants a musical while Twilight wants uh, a sci-fi movie and Spike says, uh, "Girls, your ideas are great, but I, I have, I have my own thing. Like I have my own idea I want to do, and I want to do a documentary of you girls in Shokuku Corner." The girls are excited about it, but due to well, not being used to the camera, and not <laughs> well, do not uh, due to not being used to the camera, they act robotic and unnatural they they are not acting themselves and they start to mess up they, they start to mess things up and spike just 
tries to remind them, oh, girls, no problem. Just do do what you do naturally and um, do what you always do. But it seems that the idea of a camera in front of them doesn't work. Like, they try to one-up themselves, try to make themselves look good and whatnot. And Spike just can't. Like, Spike can't do it. So, Spike decides to, you know, you know what? Uh, let's try to move this to a more casual setting. So, he brings up a couch and tells the girls to, girls, uh, speak to me or speak to the audience. How would you speak to your friends? And for some reason, Twilight and Twilight just as nervous as she is address the camera as a friend and ah uh, man Spike really just can't like ah uh, nah man like she, he is just angry at it and as pure before not really angry it's frustrated and as pure before uh, the girls come in and try to well one of themselves and act unnaturally and with that Spike just gives up and you know what I I can't the girls I, I just can't like I'm gonna do something else I'm gonna do something else and he flies off but before he flies off he turns on the record button so the girls don't really know that they're being recorded I mean I'm gonna pause here <clears throat> so the whole setup for Spike going away to essentially community college just to do uh, film school and whatnot and getting an assignment to make a movie and the movie he chose is The Life of uh, Ponies in Sugar Cube Corner is ingenious. This this is one of those things where, hey, I am a student in film school and I have been given a movie to uh, make what movie would I do? Oh, I know, I'll do the simplest thing. I just record a documentary of my friends in the store uh, in Sugar Cube Corner in this uh, instance. Oh, something always fun and exciting happens in Sugar Cube Corner. Ah, uh, this will be easy for content. <laughs> but once they know that they're being recorded, it gets a lot harder and things are not as what they seem. And think about it this way. Um, if you were to create a documentary of what uh, and whatnot, and you're you're creating something like uh the life of a local game store. Um yeah, the life in a local game store or your LGS, how would that work? I mean, honestly, you just record the environment, the storekeeper doing his job, basically, which is attending to customers, uh, arranging his products and putting on putting them in the shelves. And then you uh, record the customers doing their thing, playing their games, and uh, interview them and ask them what do they think, what do they like about the store, and then uh, all that stuff. I mean, it's, it's basically... Natural things that you would want to do, but you will be faced with those people who get really nervous when they're in front of a camera. They get camera shy and they climb up. Those are usually the difficult parts to deal. But with Spike and what he's doing, by secretly recording them <clears throat> there there is a lot of so much wrong going there because if i'm not mistaken it could be illegal to record people when they're not uh, when they don't know and there, there's a lot of things going on but since this is uh, spike's friend i'm guessing they're okay with it i mean i don't know but let's carry on let's carry on so the girls um, 
said that oh man we messed up helping Spike I, I hope he's not mad at us and they kind of goof off and do their own thing and stuff and after that um, I, I'm guessing a few days Spike shows his movie to the girls and the girls just say oh man like what what did Spike use like we, we were we didn't give him much to work with. I hope it's okay and whatnot. And it showed the movie of the girls doing their own thing. Like uh, acting natural in Shogoku Corner, playing, uh, helping each other out and all that stuff. And the girls enjoyed it a lot and really love what Spike did. And with that, the, the girls are really appreciative and they give a rounding uh no they, they give a round of applause and they they say oh wow spike that was really great i mean it really captures our essence of being in chicago corner so what's next for you uh spike just says i i don't know it could be a romance action movie with a sci-fi musical western element to it ha 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 the sky's the limit and they all laugh and episode ends. So let's go to <clears throat> let's go to final thoughts. So for game nights, I love this episode a lot. It reminds me of my dealing with my own adventures into a new game that I'm not familiar with, and. Granted, Dungeons and Dragons is not something simple, yet not something hard, because it's already there. A lot of people have played it, and a lot of guides are there. I mean, there's a lot of things on the internet to refer to. And for Twilight here, <laughs> building something from scratch and expecting somebody to play it without uh, making their own assumptions or making their own rules. Uh, I mean, granted, uh, the girls should have kind of follow her rules, but the initial s character building takes six hours. That is where I draw the line, my friends. Like, if you want to create a character and it takes six hours, I no, 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 no. Yeah, I I I'm with the girls on this one. Let's just do our own thing. Let, let's just try and dumb it down. And if I were to be honest, if you were to create your own quote-unquote kind of D&D game, a pre-made character to start off would be much simpler. Just give them something that is already made and they can uh, start the game without really going into the nitty-gritty details of creating your own character. And then when they enjoy it, they can just, well, uh, create their own because they want to try something new. They want to try something more uh, customizable or something more to their likings. And that is one of the few things with games that I do notice because gamers or people want to do something or want to create something that is special to them, want, it, want, want to have something that they can call their own. And yeah, uh, <clears throat> like I mentioned before, you start off with a pre-made character, you enjoy it, you want to do something of your own. So that is cool, that is cool. And what Twilight here should have done is that. And But I do understand. Uh, they, they want to create something where, oh, silly Twilight, you created, so you created a monster that nobody really wants to follow but they do want to play so anywho let's move on to uh what was it again uh, director spike oh man i forgot uh let's see e e e e uh yes the uh, direct uh, director spike's mockumentary so this one like i mentioned before uh i i feel for this i too am a quote-unquote filmmaker, I used to be in college doing 
filming. Uh, my course was in multimedia, and making movies was one of them. And yeah, uh, I I feel for Spike. I I feel for Spike because one of the few things that goes through my mind when trying to make a movie is how do I make it believable? How do I make everything natural? How do I just make it fun for all? And <laughs> what what Spike here did was ingenious, and it was a lot of fun. And I'm I'm guessing the mockumentary or documentary aspect of things is been done to death in real life. Uh, that's how we get uh, what you might call this uh, reality TV, reality reality drama, reality whatever it is, re- reality shows. And those are kind of done to death where you can sometimes say that, oh my god, not this again, this is boring. But, Ooh, sorry folks, uh, but in all honesty, the episode was a lot of fun. The episode was a lot of fun. I would have to say this is one of the few episodes that I enjoy. Yeah. So anywho, let's wrap things up. If you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at themutualgmail.com. You can also reach us on the Twitters. The show's Twitter account is at MBS Show, and my personal Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. And also please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube. Don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date. And also Stitcher Radio and also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on PonyVlive.com. Links are in the show notes. If you would like to support the show, you can do so at Patreon.com slash the MBS Show with every support. You'll get a week's early access to the review and discussion podcast exclusive and deleted content. And a huge thank you from me. Talking about the thank yous. Um, yes, the thank yous. There are people I would like to thank. <laughs> I'm uh, stalling for time because I need to open the uh, list. Yes, the list. <clears throat> so anywho, I would like to thank Lucky Knight, Jeffrey, myself, like, and also Tristan. Thank you so much, guys. You are great. So anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo, and I'll guys catch you next week with another fun episode of the MBS Show. See ya.